I'm not going to take up a lot of your time because uh, I know I'm standing between you and lunch. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm Pete Fondle. Um, I'm a professor at Illinois Central College and also one of the regional cover crop specialists. Uh, I've been doing this job for a little over a year now. Um, basically, what my job is going to be for you guys is to help answer questions you might have on cover crops, um, gather data from you guys, you know, what's your, what you're finding successful, what's working for you, what's not working for you, those types of things. Uh, involved in a lot of research projects on cover crops. Um, one of the big issues I know you guys are probably having or probably face is the herbicides you're using and the fact that some of those are carrying over and damaging the cover crop that fall. Um, we have some really extensive trials going on at the college and a couple other places as well um, where we've got about 19 different corn herbicides and about 16 different soybean herbicides um, replicated uh, four times and we're using them at 1x and 2x rates and then we're going to be plant cover crops on top of those into the fall. So we're rating all those trials on carryover potential. And I think one thing that I might just point out from I think our first year's data we've gotten back, um, if you guys are putting cover crops out and you're thinking you're getting a really good stand, the cover crop looks nice, you know, a few weeks after you plant, and then by maybe spring there's not a whole lot left, um, some of that still might be herbicide carryover. We're definitely seeing the effects of some of the herbicides not really taking the cover crop out immediately after it's up and going, but about five to six weeks later. So, um, so keep that in mind. Watch your herbicides very closely, what you're using. Uh, this year might even be particularly important. Obviously, with this, all this rainfall we've been having, a lot of the post springs not been done on beans yet and may not be for quite a while yet. Um, the longer we put those sprays, or I should say the closer we put those sprays to harvest or later in the summer, the more likely they're going to be sticking around in the fall. So watch your herbicide programs pretty close this year. Um, also, if you're going to put a cover crop on, whether it's air, drilled, whatever, watch your moisture contents a little bit. Um, you know, if you're going to spread, especially by air, uh, watch your forecast, weather forecast. Make sure you're going to have a little bit of rainfall coming up maybe the next week uh, and get those cover crops off to a good start. And the number three would be to make sure your corn and soybean plants, if you're, if you're seeding into them, those plants are starting to mature in the fall. You know, like the corn crop, the corn needs to be, you know, starting to mature out. Some of the leaves turning brown. Soybeans at least see some yellow leaves going on, those types of things. Because the three things you're going to need, no herbicide carryover, good rainfall, and sunlight hitting the ground to get those cover crops off to a good start. So with that, um, there's lots of meetings going to be coming up here this summer, fall, winter. Uh, if you have meetings you need me to come and talk to, I'd be more than willing to come. Uh, but whatever you need um, will be available. And again, we'll try to get the research we're doing out to you as, as we get it. Um, and uh, lots of field days and workshops coming up, so I'd like to see you there. Thank you.